Hello and welcome to another gameplay tutorial video. We're going to be updating some of the different gameplay tutorial videos that we've done with the original version of the game with On Deck Baseball. Uh, we're going to be updating them with the On Deck Baseball Pro so everybody gets a chance to look at them. And today we're going to be kicking it off with the basic confrontation roll. This is the gameplay mechanic that actually will kick off the gameplay uh, once you start rolling into the on-deck baseball game. Uh, I chose to go with the 1986 World Series teams, the 1986 New York National League team and the 1986 Boston American League team. Uh, I chose game two just because we had the rocket on the mound uh, so it gives you a nice little uh, picture of what that year's World Series looked like. So what the confrontation roll does is it determines whether or not you're going to be rolling off of the pitcher or the batter's card. And you could do that one of two ways. You can do it the uh, basic or rookie way, or you could do it the pro or all-star way, uh, which is basically just differences in levels of difficulty to play the game. In the rookie or basic way, you're going to be using just the overall pitching mechanic and the overall batting mechanic. When you get into uh, Pro or All-Star, you're going to start breaking it down into the actual uh, lefty versus righty snapshots. Um, but first, we're going to go over the rookie way, and that is going to be basically applying the pitching mechanic, or sorry, the pitching attribute against the batting attribute. You're going to add those together, and then that result will be applied to the roll of 1d10. And then if you have 6 or above, it's a batter's card. If you have 5 or below, it is going to be a pitcher's card. So for Roger Clemens, we have a minus 5 on his pitching attribute. And Lenny Dykstra nails, we have a 3 on his batting attribute. So minus 5 plus 3 is going to be minus 2. We're going to go ahead and roll 1d10. And we get a 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0, that's obviously below 6, so then it would be a pitcher's card and we would roll off the matrix with our 2 d10 dice. Uh, we're not going to be doing that right now as we're just going to be going through a lineup with the uh, confrontation roll that kicks off the at-bat. So we did Dykstra, we're going to go over to Wally Backman. You can see that his bat and attribute now is a little bit higher, it's a 4. Roger Clemens will stay the same with a minus 5, but the... Uh, application to the roll is only going to be a minus one now. So we're going to roll our d10. It is a minus one applied to a five, which is going to be a four. Again, that is less than six, so it would be, again, off of the pitcher's card. Now, obviously, Roger Clemens is a minus five. That's the highest you can get, so you're going to get a lot of pitcher's card rolls. That's because he is one of the more dominant pitchers, especially in this particular postseason. So now we have Keith Hernandez up at the plate. He is a 4 as well. Roger Clemens, again, a minus 5. It's a minus 1 to the roll. And it is a 2. That goes down to a 1. And again, that is off of the pitcher's card. So now we're going to start doing it the all-star way. And that is going to be going off of the righty-lefty splits. We have Gary Carter here. Roger Clemens is a righty. Carter is a righty batter as well. So versus right-handed pitchers, he was only a 2. And versus right-handed batters, Roger Clemens was a minus 5. So that is going to be a minus 3 applied to the roll. So we're going to roll our D10 again. And we get a 1. So obviously that's going to go into negative numbers, which is lower than 6. So that would have been a pitcher's card. We'll go on ahead on to the next batter, which is going to be the straw man, Daryl Strawberry. Against right-handed pitchers, he was a four. Strawberry is a left-handed batter. So left-handed batters against Clemens. Clemens is only a minus four. So that is actually going to be an equal roll. So we'll go ahead and roll, and whatever the result is on the die is what it's going to be. So we roll a one. That is going to be a pitcher's card. If that was six or above, it would have been a batter's card. We'll go ahead and go into the next batter here. Danny Heap. He was a four against right-handed pitchers. He is a lefty batter. So against Roger Clemens, again, he was minus four against lefty batter. So it's going to be equal again. We're going to go ahead and roll the die. And that is a three. So it looks like the first couple innings of this game would have been all Roger Clemens on his card as he has definitely dominated the confrontation roll. We'll go ahead and do it one more time here. See if we can get a batter's card. Here is Hojo, Howard Johnson. Uh, recently acquired from the Detroit Tigers, I believe. Uh, he did not have much playing time on the 86 team, but obviously he flourished into one of their better power hitters later on. So he is a switch hitter, 
which means against the right-handed Clemens, he'll be batting lefty. So against right-handed pitchers, he is a 3. Against left-handed batters, Clemens again is a minus 4. So it's going to be a minus 1 on a roll. And we roll an 8. That would go down to a 7, but a 7 is still higher than uh, 5. And like I said, 6 or above would be a batter's card. So that would lead to our first batter's card for the 86 New York National League team. And Hojo would be able to roll on his batter's card matrix. So that does do it for the confrontation roll. That is the gameplay mechanic that kicks off everything in the on-deck baseball game. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel as I'd like to get more and more of these videos out to everybody. Uh, and I appreciate you spending your time with me. Thank you.